This is a call to prayer and intercession. This is a call to worship the living God. Hi, my name is Pastor G or Pastor Stanley Guanzura. I'm an author, a pastor, a musician, a gospel artist, and a husband and a father. And it's such a pleasure to be with you today um, in a brand new spanking program called Worship Dynamics, where we talk about everything worship. If you're a gospel artist, a worship leader, a musician, or somebody who wants to just enhance their life in terms of how they worship God and how they love God, this is the program for you. Today we're looking at a topic called the profile of a worshiper. In other words, what a, pro what a worshiper looks like, a worshiper of the living God looks, looks like. Um, I've, now, I've, I've been leading worship for close to over 31 years, uh, if not more. I've been a gospel artist for almost 20 years. And one of the things that I've really had a passion for is to see worship leaders who are grounded, musicians and gospel artists who are grounded. The reason why, you know, a lot of young artists and worship leaders rise to the top, have impact, then disappear, is simply because of one fact, is that we have charisma, but we don't have character. And so when we're looking at the issue of the profile of the worshiper, we're looking at things that build the character. Because character becomes, is, is who we are. Character is who we are. And so the kind of world we live in, in terms of church, a lot of premium is placed on talent instead of character. A lot of premium is placed on the gift, sometimes without pre pre placing, placing emphasis. On, 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 on the person who is leading or singing. So today I just want to look at, I want to just give a few thoughts, a couple of things that I've learned over the years on, on worship. And, uh, and, and, and I've come up with, uh, with, a, with a chapter, this is taken from my book, Indestructible, Light Lessons of Life and, and, and Music from My Journey. So these are personal experiences, personal lessons I've, learn, I've learned. Here we go. First lesson, first character trait of a worshiper is brokenness. In Isaiah chapter 6, when it says that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord on his throne, high and lifted up. What is the significance of this chapter? Let me go ahead and just maybe paraphrase a few things that happened in that chapter. Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. Then I cried unto him and I said, Woe unto me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Who lives amongst a people of unclean lips? What happened there? You see, true worship begins when we begin to see God for who he is. And ourselves for who we are without him. Without his grace. Yeah. Isaiah was confronted, I, I mean, listen, let, let me give a modern day example. A lot of times people say, I enjoyed the worship, or I didn't enjoy the worship, uh, so and so was leading today. Imagine if people went to the temple and they were asking myself, themselves, uh, who's, who's handling the bull today? Who's do sacrificing the bull today? Imagine that. If we only knew the sacredness of worship, we wouldn't say such things. We wouldn't talk about worship being for our benefit. True worship begins when we see God for who He is. Isaiah saw God, the holiness of God, the, the greatness, the awesomeness of God. Then he realized how small he was. That's why he said, One to me, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. Because he's so good for God for who He is. True worship begins then. But then what something interesting happens. Some the angels go to the altar, take a coil, 
Then they put it on Isaiah's lips and they say to him, you've been cleansed. Then there's a voice that says, who shall go for us? Isaiah says, then I, I shall go. That's, that's a picture of the grace of God. Without God, without God intervening, without God through his son giving us righteousness, giving us, giving us a place where we could get forgiveness and receive grace, we would not be able to go for him. And so Isaiah says, I will go in the light of the fact that God had given him grace over his unclean lips. So the first trait of a worshiper is being broken. We need to be broken. You cannot lead worship and be full of yourself. We have to be full of God. When we look at the, the, the fact that God is so great and without him we are nothing. Having that sense. The second character trait of a worshiper is holiness. Where you are just say holiness after me. Holiness is something interesting because when the people hear this word holiness, they think it's some some weird, you know, moral code where people have to dress a certain way, people have to say, have a certain language. No, no, no. The word holy in the Greek is the word hagios, yeah, which means separate, without blemish, without sin. Now, there are two types of holiness when, when it comes to the Bible. There is what is known as positional holiness. What is positional holiness? I will, I will illustrate that for you. When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and I, He gave us a, a, a situation where He took our sins upon Himself. Remember the story of the Passover when the nation of Israel was in the, in the, in, 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 in the land of Egypt. They painted the blood of, of a pure lamp on the, bo on the doorpost. And when the angel of death passed over them, he did not destroy the firstborn of the nation of Israel because of the blood. That made them holy. That sanctified them. That gave them righteousness. Now the same thing, when Jesus died on the cross for you and I, we receive when when we ask him to come into our lives we receive positional holiness before the presence of god the blood of jesus covers us from all our sins past present and future and as a result we have positional holiness so the second mark of a, of, of, a, of a true worshiper is holiness he has positional holiness but also there's what is known as functional holiness the Bible, salvation is in, on three levels. First of all, salvation is in, the, is in the past where God has forgiven us of our past sins. But salvation is in the present where God is giving us, we are being made more like Christ day after day. That is, God is freeing us from things that, that hold us back from loving Him. He's freeing us from old habits and we are being transformed daily. Then, Salvation is in the future when God will free us from this earthly body and free us from the presence of sin. And so, there is functional holiness, but even in the light of that, the Bible then calls us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That means we need to live a life that is holy. That's why Peter even quotes this verse, says, Be holy for I am holy. The, uh, uh, you know, quoting, the, uh, quoting God in, from the book of Leviticus means that we are supposed to strive towards a holy life not necessarily to qualify for heaven but to demonstrate that we are a changed people and have experienced positional holiness so that, that's the second mark of a worshipper the third mark of a worship worshipper is being spirit filled he is spirit filled I remember, I remember very vividly in my early years as a Christian when I came to know the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. I remember God had to convict me of sin, righteousness and judgment to come. And that was the Holy Spirit convicting me. And when I opened my heart to Jesus to come into my life, He changed my nature. The things that I used to love, I didn't love anymore. That meant I had become born again. I put a new nature in my life. So the Spirit of God was involved in, you, in your salvation, in my salvation.
But then in, 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 the, in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 says, Be filled with the Spirit of the living God. With the Holy Spirit. Do not be drunk on it, but be filled with the Spirit of God. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit of God? I love coffee. I love coffee. I shouldn't drink it because I, I struggle with high blood pressure. But I love coffee. But if you take a cup of coffee, Jacob's coffee, which happens to be my favorite, you put two spoons of sugar, it goes and settles in the bottom. If you do not stir, you will not taste the sweetness. You taste it from far off. But when you stir, in our Shona language, you taste the sweetness of the sugar. That's what it means to be filled. Many of us have the Spirit of God in our lives. When we became born again, the Holy Spirit came in. When, when, when we asked Jesus to come in, the Holy Spirit was involved and he came in. But many of us are not filled by the Spirit of God because we are not allowing him room or control of our life. To be Spirit-filled means that we allow God, through the Spirit of God, to control us, to fill us, to be in charge of our lives, to lead us. And so, any worship of the living God needs to be Spirit-filled. And for you to experience God at, at the highest level, you need to allow the Spirit of God to fill you. Number four, the fourth mark of a worshiper is that the worshiper is word-filled. Come on, say after me, word-filled. What do we mean by word-filled is full of the word. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, say, do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. But meditate upon it day and night, being careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You know, verse want to run to the prosperous and successful. But it talks about, <coughs> sorry, it talks about us meditating upon the book of the law and also being careful to do everything in it. Then Paul in Colossians chapter 3 if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a, it's a verse 14, 15, 16, thereabout. talks about the fact that greet one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. He's talking about the word of God right there. Yeah? And let the word of God richly dwell in you. Yeah? The word of God, if you're going to worship God, and if you're going to be a worshiper of God, you need to let the word of God dwell in your life. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor sits in the seat of scoffer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And upon that law he meditates day and night. Psalm 1. He then he shall be prosperous and successful. Now I want to say to everybody, who wants to be a worshiper? If you are a worship leader, for you to lead worship powerfully. If you are a worshiper, if you, for you to live your life powerfully for God, you need to let the word of God live in your life. You have to be word filled. Number five, you need to be faith filled. Faith filled. Without faith it is impossible to please God. True worship is predicated or built on the foundation of faith in God. Faith number one for a personal relationship. Faith number two for life. As you live your life, living a life of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you live a life of faith, the same way you trust the combi that you get into to get you to town and that it's going to get you to town without asking, is the engine okay? Is there petrol in the combi? You don't ask those questions when you get into a combi. You just get in and you're trusting it will get you there. That's the same way we need to live our lives with God. To have that same faith, that level of faith where we trust God the same way I'm sitting on this chair. I didn't ask, will that chair hold my weight? I'm a bit built up. Will I never asked those questions. I just sat. That's the same way we need to have faith in God. Trust in Him. Furthermore, we need to have faith in God to be faith-filled because that's what worship is all about. It's about worshiping the God who's more than able to do far exceedingly, far more abundantly that we can ask and imagine of you, of him. Those are just a few of the character traits in the profile of a worshiper. If you want to know more information, please uh, get in touch 
on the information that's going to be provided on the screen. Then we'll make you, we will show you where you can get my book, Indestructible Lessons of Life and Music from My Journey. God bless you. I'm Pastor Stanley Guanzura. You've been watching another program, another episode of the program Worship Dynamics, where we learn all things worship. God bless you. Be revived in your spirit.